Let me remind you, I'm not a supporter of Trump. I'm not a supporter of Biden. I'm giving you an observation, and I think you ought to be able to respect that without calling me names or saying to somebody or another that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not carrying water for either one of these. I just Let me tell you what I, I'm observing, that there is now put together a mega movement to crush Trump and his followers. And they're, they've, they've assembled the three of the living presidents. Jimmy Carter is living, but he... He's not that well. He was unable to participate. Last night, they had the three ones that are able to participate, Bill Clinton, George Bush, and Barack Hussein, the long-legged Mac Daddy Obama. And they they all were in unity on the same thing, that there should have been a peaceful transfer of power and that Trump deprived them of that. Uh, I'm going to let you listen to what they said. Uh, Mr. Engine, if you could bring up that clip, would you please? Well, good evening, America. Obviously, there was a personal element to see my former vice president uh, become the 46th president, uh, to see uh, Kamala Harris as our first woman vice president. Uh, But more broadly, I think inaugurations signal a tradition of a peaceful transfer of power that is over two centuries old. Well, I think uh, the fact that the three of us are standing here talking about a peaceful transfer of power speaks to the uh, in- institutional integrity of They're our both country. About so this is an unusual transfer. thing. We are both trying to come back to normalcy, this is a, this is deal a plot. with totally abnormal challenges, to crush and do what we Trump. do best, which is try to make a more perfect union. It's an exciting time. We've got to Trump followers. Not just three listen to folks we agree with, him. but listen to folks we don't. Uh, and and they're, they're, you know, one they're of my number one charge in the inauguration was, was not a peaceful uh, transfer the, of power. He did not the grace offer that. and generosity that President Bush showed me and Laura Bush showed Michelle. And it was a reminder that we can have fierce disagreements uh, and yet recognize each other's common humanity and that as Americans, uh, we have more in common than what separates us. I think if uh, Americans would uh, love their neighbor like they lo- would like to be loved themselves, uh, uh, a lot of the division in our society would end. That's what this means. It's Engineer, a new beginning. I'll leave that up there. Leave it up there for just a moment. Let, let Clinton finish his statement. And everybody needs to get off their high horse and reach out to their friends and neighbors and try to make it possible. If, in fact, as George said, we're looking for what binds us together, uh, the American people are strong, they're tough, uh, they can get through hardship, uh, and uh, there's no problem they can't solve uh, when we're working together. I think that was the theme of Joe's inaugural speech, and uh, I think all of us discovered that we're at our best when we're uh, all moving in the same direction. America is a generous country with people with great hearts. All three of us were lucky to be the president of this country. Uh, Mr. President, Uh, I'm pulling for your success. Your success is our country's success, and God bless you. I'm glad you're there, and I wish you well. You have spoken for us today. Now you will lead for us, and we're ready to march with you. Good luck. God bless you. Joe, I'm proud of you, uh, and you and Kamala uh, need to know that you've got all of us here rooting for your success keeping you in our prayers, uh, and we will be available in any ways that we can as citizens to to help you guide our country forward. Uh, We wish you Godspeed. Now, instantly when I saw that I heard this last night, uh, I I see that they are now putting together a a bipartisan, uh, because you got two Democrats and one Republican, George Bush Republican, a bipartisan, and if you are willing to extend it that far, a biracial, uh, if you must, um, uh, approach primarily. Uh, now, this would not necessarily be the spearhead of the attempt to, to crush Trump and his followers, but you can see they're united against him. Their, their one theme tonight was, was not the coronavirus, no messages about that. Nothing about the economy, the people dying, no messages about that. Yeah, their one thing, and that's and those three were put together for one purpose, to begin to sell to the people who would support Trump and to the media that Trump should have 
offered a peaceful transfer of power. And, they, and the, Mac, the Mac Daddy talks about how he gave a peaceful transfer of power to, to Trump, he and Michelle, to Melania and Trump. And then it goes on to talk about how George Bush and Laura gave a peaceful transfer of power to him. And so I, these are things I think that need to be pointed out uh, and as we're looking at the strategy and the game plan to be able to, uh, to crush Trump. Well, my question would be this. Well, what would be, what would the inauguration would look like had Trump been there on yesterday? I, I, it, 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 it probably would, would probably made a lot of people nervous. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon. Uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man who will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.